Hey everyone, Ryan here with Greystone Mortgage. Today I want to talk to you about one of the four things we look at when helping somebody with a home loan. Today I want to talk to you about DTI. Or what's known as debt to income ratio. We typically like to see this ratio at 45%. So we want to have the income divided by 45% and all the new bills need to be under that particular factor. Now we do have ways to go over 45% with compensating factors like loan to value, credit score, time on the job, type of income, but generally we want to be under 45%. Now what this includes is the new mortgage and that would include the principal and interest on the loan, the taxes and insurance, if there's mortgage insurance, if there's an HOA, so the total new loan, what that total payment is, goes into this factor. The other things that go into the factor are anything that's on the credit report. So this would be student loans, this would be visas, this would be car loans, uh, overdrafts, store cards, anything that reports to the credit bureau, we want to add into this factor as well. Now a quick note on student loans. A lot of them are in some sort of deferment stage or there's not payments being made on it, but us as lenders, we know there's going to be a payment on that debt. So we have to find out what the payment would be if it's out of deferment. This is pretty easy. Most of the student loan companies out there, they know that we need that information. They have pretty standard form letters you can get on their website or request it with customer service, that kind of thing. But generally, we need to see what that payment would be if it was out of deferment to factor into this 45%. So I want to do a little analogy here. Let's take a $280,000 mortgage. Okay. Let's use an interest rate of 4.5%. That doesn't necessarily mean today's rates or this loan would qualify for it, but just kind of using it as an example, let's use 4.5% for the mortgage rate. The payment would be 14,18,72. So the principal and interest on a $280,000 loan at 4.5% would be 14,18,72. Then we would factor in the homeowner's insurance and the taxes. So for this analogy, let's say the taxes are 125 a month. Taxes. And let's say the insurance is $60 a month. So the total payment would be 160372. So that would be the total payment for this particular scenario. And let's go ahead and throw in a car loan of 300 bucks a month. And then let's throw in uh, a couple of visas, maybe a student loan or two. Let's just say it's $200 for every other debt that's reported on the credit report. Okay, so we add those up. That would be, what is that, 20, 210372. So now we need income 45% above that particular number. Like I said, there is some exceptions being made uh, depending on the loan to value and some other things, but let's stay with the 45% because that just guarantees a better chance for the approval. So if we take 45%, uh, that would be 40, 46, 46, 74, 93. So that's how much monthly income we would need to verify or show to be able to qualify for this scenario for a $280,000 mortgage with taxes and insurance. And so there's some guesses in there, of course, but just to show you how the math, how the math uh, pencils out. So that times that by 12, so that's what, 40, no, 50, 56,000 and some change per year. So that's how much per year this scenario would have to pay out. So I hope that gives you an idea of what we're looking at as a lender of how debt to income ratio works. I'd love to help you with the home loan. We can help you with the purchase, build, refinance, but this is just one of the four things we're really looking at to help you get approved for a loan. But part of our pre-approval process is to check to see if your income would qualify for this particular scenario. So give me a call. I can run through any different scenarios, show you what you can qualify for, what your mortgage payment would be, get you a quick quote. We can do it on my website at ryanbolton.com or you can call my office at 435-627-0494. Thanks for watching.